about the BRM cars, which had arrived at the last minute and had not therefore practiced, were in hot pursuit of the leaders and both Parnell and Walker were driving perfectly. Fangio and Farina were driving like masters, demonstrating the famous slide technique of cornering with studied precision, whilst Gonzalez, still out in front, was driving a little less tidily, holding his car into the arc by brute force and pressing on with tremendous determination. After six laps, Fangio began to close in on Gonzalez and at ten laps passed him and slowly began to draw away, but never to a safe distance. All the time the speeds were rising and after 105 miles, Fangio led at an average speed of 96.29 miles per hour, followed by Gonzalez. Senezi pulled in for fuel and tyre changes and our camera shows clearly the excitement in the Alpha pit when it was discovered that owing to broken spokes dropping behind the brake hubs, it was not possible to remove the wheel, the trouble Alphas had experienced before. In the lap, Gonzalez, whose handling of his car was a delight to watch, took the lead despite an argument with the straw bales at Beckett's corner, and there he stayed. With only five laps to go, Gonzalez led by one minute five seconds, and he began to ease off a little. Meanwhile, Farina, with a slipping clutch, had pulled up at Avicar with his engine on fire. The BRM drivers were still battling fluffily on, despite the fact they were suffering from hand and feet burns, and eventually they finished in fifth and seventh positions. Speeds were terrific, and in the 38th lap, Farina had screamed around at 99.99 miles per hour and established a lap record which remained unbeaten. the first time in post-war racing, Alphas were beaten and a new star was born in Gonzalez, who, driving his Ferrari at an average speed of 96.11 miles per hour, had won the British Grand Prix with Fangio and Villaresi, second and third. A truly magnificent race.